Good morning, everybody. Yes! <laughs> well, that's so kind. Thank you. You haven't even heard what I want to say. It could be awful. It could be terrible. Who knows? Thank you. Uh, it is such a blessing uh, to be back. And I uh, just want to thank Adam and Craig for inviting us. And uh, like they actually invited us. I didn't just like come up here, right? <laughs> and uh, just so appreciative of that. I have to tell you that um, through church transition, this is actually abnormal where this gets to happen. And, uh, but it's been able to happen uh, through a couple churches called Walnut Hill Community Church and Kensington Church in Michigan that have a similar value, the same value of honoring Jesus Christ above all. And, uh, and so to get an invitation back uh, has just been a real honor and, and joy. Thank you. Um, quick update, we're doing fine. We're doing fine. Uh, <laughs> we are transitioning still. Keep praying for us. I do have to say we, we believe the Lord has us in the right place at the right time and that God is doing a great thing. And uh, we, we love the people in Michigan, but we deeply miss uh, the relationships that we fostered over 16 years. And so um, keep praying for us. We're so thankful for you and uh, it's so good to be, to be back. A lot of people have asked how the girls are doing and they would love to have an extensive one hour conversation with you after the service about that, I'm sure each and every, no, I'm just kidding. They're doing fantastic. We remain so proud of each of our girls, McKenna, Nora, Reese, and Bria. They've just been extraordinary uh, through all of this. And uh, so I'm thankful for that as we, we talk about Thanksgiving. Today I wanna talk about arising into gratitude. Uh, as we are in this Thanksgiving weekend, you know, I always pray that for me, it wouldn't just last for a weekend. <laughs> Right, that I'd actually be a grateful person that gives thanks throughout the whole entire year. And as I was thinking about that, you know, I think all of us could use an upgrade in our gratitude. And so I want to call this sermon Gratitude Upgrade. Do you need an upgrade in gratitude? I think all of us could go a level higher in gratitude. And so I want you just to, to say back at me, you've done a great job at this already, I'd love for you just to say back to me, it's time for an upgrade. Okay, ready? Here we go. It's time for an upgrade. Fantastic. Now look at your neighbor and say, it's time for an upgrade. I remember when I was 13 years old, uh, up to that point, I had never worn a pair of jeans in my life. I, I wore sweatpants all the way up until 13, and this was before sweatpants were cool. Like sweatpants right now are cool. It's what all the in kids are wearing, but not then. And I remember my older sister, who's seven and a half years older, Tina, and my brother, Craig, who's two and a half older than me, uh, they were going to a concert and I had never been to a concert, and I think it was a Michael W. Smith concert. So yeah, oh yeah, we were living on the edge, you know, uh, as kids. And I was like, I want to go. And they said, you can only go if you take those sweatpants off and put a pair of jeans on. Because friends, it was time for an upgrade. I'm going to need your participation here. I've got a few more. Okay, I've got a few more. I remember uh, when I went to my friend's house and saw that they were rocking a Nintendo and a Sega. We were still on the Atari system. It was time for an upgrade. I remember when I was 15 years old, you can see proof if you want it. I'm sure Craig would be glad to show it. He likes showing pictures of me when I was younger. But I was rocking at 15 years old the bull haircut, okay? And, and I realized quickly nobody else had the bowl haircut anymore because it was time for an upgrade, right? I remember at one point going to my friend's house and they had cable, like the youngest kid wasn't holding the bunny ears any longer. And I went home because that was my job, like to hold the bunny ears so everybody could watch the TV. And I realized it was time for an upgrade, right? You might be a... <laughs> I don't know if this is gonna work. <laughs> You might be a Giants fan thinking to yourself right now, it's time for an upgrade, okay? You might be a Patriots fan right now going, we know it's time 
for an upgrade. I've lost all of you, I know. But it's Christmas time, right? Christmas time is coming. You might be looking at your phone going, it's time for an upgrade. You might be looking at your car that you drove here. You're not sure it's gonna start in the parking lot. You could donate it to the car ministry here at Walnut Hill because it's time for an upgrade. I don't know if this one will work either, but you might be looking at your... <laughs> you, you might be looking at your friends right now going, <laughs> it's time for an upgrade. There are some parents in the room right now and your children are dating and you know you need to look at them in the eyeballs and say, it's, oh, I need some more passion on that one. It's time for an upgrade. Time for an upgrade. I wonder, are you ready to upgrade today? Something more valuable than upgrading your kitchen or upgrading your car or even upgrading your, your friendships. Are you ready to upgrade your gratitude? Are you ready to upgrade your gratitude? You know, oftentimes on your phone, you'll see that there's a new operating system update. And um, I was thinking about this, and sometimes you click that update and you wish you had the version before. But w what if those upgrades were always good? And what if, what if we were able to just send out uh, an operating system upgrade to all people that would actually upgrade their gratitude? Would you want them to hit that button? Yeah, what if our world just become, became more more grateful for the things that we have and get to be a part of, I think I'd, I'd hit that button saying, yeah, I want that upgrade. And guess what? I want that upgrade for our worlds. I want it for the people I encounter and I interact with. I want it for the church, that we would be known as a people who are grateful, that we give thanks in and out of seasons. I think I'd, I'd hit that button. Now, the thing that we need to be cautious of, are there, there are other upgrades out there that tempt us and, and come to us and, and our world is wanting us to hit the button of upgrade. There's the materialism upgrade. The material upgrade will, will make you have this desire to have what you don't have. And when you're always desiring what you don't have, it's really hard to be grateful for what you do have. Don't hit that update. There's the envy update. And the envy update is the one where you look at somebody else and you go, wow, I want what they have. And as long as you keep hitting that update, it's going to be really hard to be a grateful person, grateful for the things that you have. There's the cynicism update. And this update causes us to be skeptical about all things. Uh, it couldn't be as good as I think it is. And it robs us of being grateful people. We have to be careful as we walk through this world about the updates that are out there. But if there was an update that we could hit for our gratitude, I'd accept it every time. You know, the best way, the best way to remove the bugs of these other updates is through gratitude itself. Practicing gratitude. Lord, I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful. It's time for an upgrade. Let me share our, our passage today, which Becca already read, but I just want to share some teaching on it real quickly out of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. This is verse 18. I want to concentrate on that for just a moment. It says this, the Apostle Paul, be thankful in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you who belong to Christ Jesus. Be thankful in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you who belong to Christ Jesus. Have you ever wondered what God's will is for your life? You know, I think a lot of times we, we go through relationships where we're trying to impress and win approval from people. Many of you might be trying to win approval from your friend groups. Maybe some of you who are in school, you're trying to win approval. Maybe some of you are trying to win approval from your mother or your, your father. You just, you want to win that approval. And certainly, I think for those of us who follow the Lord, we're, we're trying to oftentimes win approval. Man, if I could just live in such a way that would please the Lord. Well, this verse is such a gift to us because it says, here, you, you want to know how to walk in the will of God? Here's how you do it. I love what the Apostle Paul is doing here for us. He's, he's kind of saying, listen, this is not a journey without a map. In Christianity, it's not a journey without a map. No, I've given you very clear instructions on how to walk in the will of God. And this is what it means to walk in the will of God, to be thankful 
in all circumstances. Now, it's really important that Paul doesn't say, be thankful for all circumstances. Now, that, I'd have a hard time with that, wouldn't you? I'd have a really hard time with that. What do you mean I'm supposed to be thankful for? For the brokenness of this world? I have to be thankful for the thing that's inflicting me? I have to be thankful for this? No, no, no. What Paul's saying, be thankful in. Be thankful in every circumstance. This is a critical point. I have to tell you, as a, as a pastor, I've had so many privileged moments of walking with people in some of their most difficult seasons of life. And it's amazing for, for people who are really following the Lord and, and pressing in and experiencing the presence of God. I, I've heard this statement so many times from people who have lost loved ones, saying, you know what, this is a miserable moment of life. I'm, I'm suffering in sorrow, but, but I, can, I can sense the peace of the Lord in my life. I can be thankful for his presence. I can think of stories of people who have struggled in their marriages. I can think of stories of, of people who have tried to climb out of addiction and God met them in those places. And although the season was terrible, many times people even look back and go, you know what, it's weird for me to say this, but I wouldn't replace that season because I learned about the presence of God in it. And I'm thankful for God and how he met me. I wonder, do you want a gratitude upgrade today? Now, I'm the youngest, and so I can remember at the Thanksgiving table, you, the youngest usually sits either at the kids' table or the very end, right? And I don't know around your tables this Thanksgiving if you had a kids' table. Now, Becca's family is a very big family, six kids, and her youngest sister is still at the kids' table, and she's like 35 years old, right? She's still there. She's still there. Maybe she'll get an upgrade one of these years. Colleen, I'm rooting for you. I'm rooting for you. It's gonna happen. It's gonna happen one of these days. Well, I, I think this is a moment for us to say, you know what, I, I no longer wanna be at the kid's table of gratitude. It's time to upgrade. It's time to, to step up. And here's, here's what I'd like to do today. Is I'd like to share three stages of gratitude. And they're all really, really good. But there is a sequence that will help us learn and grow in our gratitude. And so I wanted to share these three stages of gratitude. And as I do that, I wanna invite you to upgrade your gratitude. Maybe for some of you, you're not in stage one. You're stuck in cynicism. You're stuck in bitterness right now. Or you're just stuck in busyness. And you just need to step into stage one and enjoy the goodness of God there. Or maybe you need to step into stage two, stage three. Let me explain these different stages of gratitude. The first is this. Stage one sounds like this, for the. Lord, I am thankful for the. In Deuteronomy chapter eight, Moses is giving a speech near his death, and he's giving it to the people of Israel. And he's telling them two main things. As you re read Deuteronomy chapter eight, you see these two words, these two phrases come up over and over and over again. And so here, near his death, Moses is saying to the people of Israel, remember and do not forget. I need you to remember and do not forget. As you see this speech, what Moses is telling the people, he's saying, listen, remember how God led you through the wilderness. Remember how God fed you manna every single day he provided for you. Remember how your clothes, they didn't wear out. Your feet, they didn't swell. Remember the Lord when you have plenty. Do not forget that the Lord gave you something to drink in the dry parts of the desert. Do not forget that it was only through the Lord's provision and his power that you had any success at all. Remember, do not forget. And then in verse 10 of Deuteronomy 8, it says this. When you have eaten your fill, be sure to praise the Lord your God for the good land he has given you. This is the first stage of gratitude for the. Moses is saying this, when God has blessed you, say something. Say something. Say something. Give thanks. 
When you experience the love of God, give thanks. When you experience his provision, give thanks for the, for the provision. We often, sadly, forget this stage, yet it's really elementary. And here's how we can step into this stage. You see, a, a gratitude upgrade into this stage means that we remember and we return. We look back and we speak up. All this takes is intentionality. Lord, where have I seen your hand in my life? Lord, I I want to remember, and I want to return. I want to look back, and I want to speak up and give thanks for all that you have done. 1 Thessalonians 5, 18, our passage today in the NIV, it says, give thanks. Give thanks. It's not this just feel thankful. It's almost this profess it. Speak it out. Give thanks for all that the Lord has done. In Luke chapter 17, there's this amazing story of Jesus and these 10 lepers, these people with this terrible disease, this, this illness, this sickness. They were they're cast out of society because of it. The, these 10 lepers come to Jesus and Jesus heals all 10 of them. And then he tells them to go to the priest. And they go to the priest. And then it says this. It says, and one of them, I love that, one of them returned and praised Jesus. Jesus looks at him and says, weren't there 10 of you? Where are the other nine? I I love in scripture how we read about how God loves the one. He goes after the one with great passion. You were the one. He had the 99, but there was one. So he left and he grabbed the one. God loves every single person. The one, the one, the one. And here, what I love how it highlights, it says, and one of them returned. What it looks like to be the one who is called by Jesus, who is saved by Jesus, who is redeemed and being restored, is to be the one who returns to say, thank you. Thank you for all that you've done. Thank you. And so this first stage of gratitude sounds like this. Jesus, thank you for providing. Thank you for how you've spoken to me. Thank you for, for the. The second stage of gratitude, it's a little deeper. And you need to start with for the, for the. But now the second stage is because of, because of. In Isaiah 41, the Lord speaks through the prophet Isaiah. Here's the context. Israel was being threatened by the Assyrian army. They were in great distress. They even began turning to idols instead of God. They were worried about their safety. They had seen the Assyrians take over other people groups, and now the Assyrians were on their doorstep, and they're very worried. And in this worry, in this distress, they begin to turn to other things. And then God speaks through a prophet, and a prophet is simply just somebody who speaks on behalf of God, and the Lord speaks through Isaiah here in the Old Testament, and this is what the Lord says through his prophet. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. This reminds me that we can always be thankful because we have God to turn to. He is with us. The the first stage of thanksgiving is, is conditional in one sense. It's for the, when we see God move in our life, for this, for that, for the. The second stage of gratitude is relational. It's because of. I'm thankful because of. Because of your presence in my dark hour, I thank you, Jesus because of your presence in my sickness, because of your presence in my doubt, in my questions, because of your presence as I face this great trial or this great decision, because of your presence even in the disruption of my life, because of your presence in the brokenness of a relationship, because of the presence, your presence, Jesus, I thank you. See, friends, this stage of gratitude teaches us that thankfulness does not only come from circumstances and situations, but it comes from pure and real presence of God in our lives. Thankfulness is not dependent on a position in life. 
It's dependent on a person in our life, Jesus Christ. And this is why we can be thankful in every season because God is with us in every season, no matter what. So how do you step into this stage? You might say, you know what? I'm really good at the for the stage. (laughs) I'm really good at that one. At night, I can look back and say, Jesus, I thank you for the, for the, I can do that. But how do I increase my gratitude? How do I upgrade my gratitude in the second stage of because of? And here's what I'd like to say is it comes through intentionality. Spending time with Jesus. Get to know him. Discipline yourself to to spend time, to set aside time to be with Jesus, to pray, to listen to him, and then turn to Jesus throughout your day, in your sadness, in your trial, in that big decision, turn to him, not just in the morning, in the night, but throughout the day. Get to know his presence, host his presence well, turn to him in the day, and thank him for it. Stage three, stage three is what I call the even when stage. David was a shepherd boy and he turned to be called to be the king of Israel. But David, as we know, and we read his story, King David, he understood trials. He understood difficulty. But I want you to listen to what David teaches us about gratitude out of one of the most famous psalms in all of scripture, Psalm 23. This is what King David says. The Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. He lets me rest in green meadows. He leads me beside peaceful streams. He renews my strength. He guides me along right paths, bringing honor to his name. Even when I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid, for you are close beside me. Your rod and your staff protect and comfort me. This next level of gratitude sounds like this. Even when I walk through the darkest valley, Jesus, I will choose to praise you. Even when I'm criticized, hurt, forgotten, I will praise you. Even when my friends post something on social media about me I don't like, I will praise you. Even when I go through sickness, Lord, I will praise you. Even when life doesn't make sense, even when things don't go as expected, I will praise you. Even when I lose a loved one, I will praise you. You can see that this level, this stage of gratitude is deeper than the rest. But I wanna tell you, friends, the deeper you go, the greater the experience of Jesus in your life you'll have. It's easy to praise him for his provision. It just takes intentionality. It takes remembering and not forgetting, looking back and speaking up. It's a bit deeper to praise him for his presence. This takes not just intentionality, but investment. Spending time with Jesus. It's much harder to praise him even when even when we encounter our imperfect and broken world. This takes faith and trust. I'm reminded of the passage Becca read out of Acts 16. This is Paul and Silas now. Jesus has risen from the dead. He's given the gift of the Holy Spirit. He's ascended into heaven. The disciples are out there. Paul encounters Jesus on the road, and now he's out there preaching the gospel and spreading the kingdom of God, and he is not liked because of it. He's thrown into prison, and in this moment, he could have sat in prison and thought to himself, it's all over. The, the, the great call in my life has been disrupted. We can't get out of this one. We're in shackles. He could have been bitter, upset, annoyed, frustrated, and rightfully so. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. And the other prisoners were listening to them. Of course they were. (laughs) They were thinking to themselves, what are they doing? These guys are insane. Hey, You're in prison right now. What are you doing singing and praying? What has your God done for you lately? (laughs) But I love how Paul and Silas, they could have chosen to 
rebel against the Lord in that moment. They could have chosen to turn their back on him. They could have chosen to be bitter. They could have chosen all these things. But what they decided to do is they chose to praise the Lord. They praised the Lord. I wonder right now in your trial, are you singing? Are you praising him? You see, God created us in a way that we are created to worship him. That actually our worship is, is healing. That as we turn our attention and our affection to the Lord, it, it's, it's healing. And not only is it healing, it's inviting to the presence of the Lord in your life. I wonder, are you choosing to sing? Even when you don't get what you want. Even when you'd have it another way. Even when you don't see the end result, will you choose to praise him and thank him? How do you step into this stage? I think it's the most difficult one. But you step into this stage by choosing and choosing again. Choosing to praise him. Choosing to depend on him. Choosing to walk with others in the Lord. Don't walk alone. Invite others in. I love what thanks brings to us. Thanksgiving and gratitude, it leads us to a healthier and happier life. There's so many studies out there that teach us that actually giving thanks, it can, it can bring health into your physical body, into your mental state. It leads us to a right state of mind. It leads us to worship. It leads us through pain. Gratitude is so important. And so friends, I wonder, is it time for an upgrade? Do you want to upgrade your gratitude? I want to invite our, our worship team back out, and I just want to lead us in all of our campuses. just want to welcome all of you. I failed to do that in the beginning, those of you in Waterbury and New Milford and in Derby. And uh, I just want to invite us into a time where we upgrade our gratitude. And so let's bow our heads as the team comes out. Lord, we just want to start with a time of confession. I, I must confess, oftentimes in life, um, I can be the skeptic, the cynic. Sometimes we like to talk about the thing that causes bitterness, how that person angers us, annoys us, how this situation is so difficult. But Lord, I pray that you'd help us upgrade our gratitude. That right now, Lord, as we look back, we'd speak up. That we'd acknowledge that you are with us and we'd praise you because of your presence. And right now, Lord, in all of our campuses, I'm sure there are people who are in the middle of a very tough season. But Lord, I pray that we would praise you even when, even when things are difficult. So friends, let me just lead us through a prayer of gratitude. And this is for you to participate in, just wherever you're sitting, in your own heart before the Lord. So Lord, right now, we just, we wanna look back. And we wanna thank you and praise you for how you've walked with us. And so Lord, just hear our prayers for the, for the, so friends, just in your own hearts right now, praise Jesus for the, for the. And now, Lord, we want to praise you because of. We don't want to be a people who just praise you when things go our way when blessing comes into our life. Lord, we wanna praise you because of your presence with us. And so Lord, we just pray that you'd hear our, our thanksgiving right now, our hearts filled with gratitude as we praise you because of your presence in our life. I'm sure there are, there are folks listening to this who are in a challenging season right now. 
And I, I wanna pray a particular prayer for you. And so if I could, in all of our campuses, if, if right now you're in a season where you really have to choose to thank the Lord even when, maybe there's sickness in your life, maybe there's a challenge, maybe there's a broken relationship, there's just a season you're in right now of depression or addiction, but you wanna step into that third stage and, and praise the Lord even when. And you might need to lean on the faith of others in this moment. So I just wanna invite you, if that's you, if that resonates with you, would you just put your hand up? Because I wanna know if I'm praying for anybody in this moment, this even when. Yeah, lots of us. Just in our campuses too. Yeah, even when. Yeah, Lord, I just pray for all my friends who put their hand up, just indicating, man, they're in a season right now. They're in a moment of life that's challenging, that's difficult. Something's facing them that doesn't seem right. They've been confronted with the brokenness of this world, the imperfection of this world. But Lord, I am so thankful that they're willing to put their hand up and say, you know what? I want to praise you, Jesus, even in this storm, even when it's the most challenging. And so Lord, I pray that as they praise you, as they thank you for your presence and your goodness in their life, that they'd actually experience healing in this moment restoration that they'd have a, an acute sense that you are walking with them bless my friends in this moment and Lord I do pray that you might bring restoration into this situation meet them in it Lord we thank you we, love, we have so much to be thankful for we love you so much. In the powerful name of Jesus and all God's people said, amen.